Would you bring glory to your great name tonight in this place? Just pray for a demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power in this place tonight. God, we're eagerly anticipating what you're going to do. We know it's going to be great. Our hearts are open to receiving from you tonight, God. We come in here humble and recognizing our great need for you, Jesus. We just want you to know you're welcome here. You're welcome here. Change our lives. God, start with me and change our lives. I pray that we'd walk out of this place different tonight than we came in. Set our hearts even more on fire for Jesus than they've ever been in our lives. God, send revival to your people. Set our hearts on fire again. Send awakening, God. Pray there wouldn't be a lost person left in this city, but everybody that doesn't know Jesus in this city, in this region, would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Please send revival, God. Spiritual awakening. We look forward to what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys excited to be here tonight? I think I can tell. You can have a seat right where you're at. Wow. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I've been looking forward to this day for a long time. Let me kind of give you some backstory to how we've gotten here. It's a Jesus story for sure, but uh, a couple of years ago, my mom gave me a book and she said, son, you need, you need to read this book, son. You need to read this book. She said, if you read this book, it could change your life. I said, mom, what, what book are you talking about? And she gave me this book. It's called The Heavenly Man. The Remarkable True Story of Chinese Christian Brother Yun. I said, okay, your, your mom recommends you read a book. You read a book, okay? Because she, moms, moms know what you should read. And I picked this up and I started reading this book. How many guys have read this book? Here, they're here now, okay. I picked this book up, I started reading it. I couldn't put it down. I think I read it in like a day or two. I mean, I didn't, I didn't stop reading until I was done. I was so inspired. And I've probably read it. I mean, I've recommended it to you guys, to thousands of people since, but I probably read it five or six times. I mean, it's just next to the Bible. It's one of the books that's made just a powerful impact on my life. Has this book made a powerful impact on your life, those of you that have read this book? It's... And I know Brother Yoon would give Jesus the credit. It's Jesus. It's a, it's a Jesus story. He's, Jesus is working in his life, and he's just telling us about it. It's kind of like when Paul said, hey, follow me as I follow Jesus. We're following Brother Yoon as he follows Jesus, right? It's about Jesus. So anyways, it, it was a remarkable story for sure as, as I read it about a Chinese Christian who was born into a China that uh, was hostile to Christianity in the 50s. And at the time, they were kicking out missionaries, kicking missionaries out of the country. They were uh, closing down churches. They were imprisoning, torturing, sometimes executing Christian pastors in his country. And he was born into this spiritual climate and grew up in it. And as a teenager, his mom led him to faith in Jesus. She had been ministered to by a missionary who had been through there years before. And he was set on fire for Jesus. And when you're set on fire for Jesus, you can't help but tell others about him, right? And so Brother Yoon starts going everywhere telling people about Jesus. Well, that was illegal. And so persecution ensued. And he was arrested time and time again. He was beaten. He was tortured, he was imprisoned, went through very trying times. But still, even in the midst of all that, when he would be released or he had some miraculous things happen where he was able to escape from prison, he'd go back to doing what he did before, what on fire people for Jesus do. He's telling everybody he knew about what Jesus had done for him and what he could do for them. And so just the persecution continued. You read about it in the book, and you also read about some amazing miracles that God did through in and through his ministry and the prisons he was in and just the lives of the people that he was able to minister to. But maybe the greatest miracle of all is that, you know, during this time as they were kind of trying to eradicate Christianity from uh, their country, um, there were 
maybe I was talking to his translator and friend, Brother Ren, a minute ago. There may be about a million Christians in China at the time. Well, uh, in the 70s, a Christian group from the U.S. went to China, and their report back to the U.S. was, there's not a single Christian left in China. That wasn't true. They were just in hiding because fear of persecution. But here's what Brother Yun's gotten to be a part of since then. So Christians at the time, 50s to 70s, maybe numbering around a million. The church in China since then, and Brother Ren's going to tell you more about this, has grown not just to tens of millions, but to over a hundred million people in China who are now professing faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Brother Yun's gotten to be a part of that. He's one of the house church leaders there in China. And so I, we always say at Experience Life, we want to be coached in America and at our church by people that are experiencing what we want to experience. And I guarantee you in our country, I want to experience what they've experienced in China. I want to see hundreds of millions of people put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We want, you want to see that too. And so anyways, the book made a big difference in my life. And um, I recommended it, you know, to the church to read, but I know not everybody's a reader, and so not, I knew not everybody would read it. So I felt like God was speaking to me uh, one day, maybe about a year ago, and kind of said, hey, you know, probably not everybody's going to read the book. Why don't you just preach the book? I was like, are you serious? Like, yeah, why don't you preach the book? And so those of you that go to Experience Life, you know that this past Easter, I did a series called Prison Break. And each week for about seven weeks, I just took one of my favorite... <clears throat> stories from the book and just told you the stories of the book and I know that many people's lives were impacted just hearing the stories of, of the book taught here from the stage and so throughout the series you guys would email me or call us and say hey 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 how cool would it be how cool would it be if brother Yoon one day like came and talked to us how cool Chris yeah have you have you called anybody have you can you email somebody up there I mean is there somebody you can email and I'd already been thinking about it, too, as we got into the series. And so I emailed somebody. I went to their website and emailed somebody. I just said, I don't know, you know, how often you guys are in the United States or anything. But next time you come, could, could we have you come down to our church and just talk to us about what you've experienced in China? And so me and one of Brother Yoon's friends kind of go back and forth on this. And we got it all worked out. And I want you guys to know that Brother Yoon is in the house tonight. <laughs> very excited about what God's going to do. And again, we all remember, we're, I know what Brother Yoon wants us to clap for. We're clapping for Jesus, but Jesus has done something awesome in his life. And so we want to hear him give testimony to that. So I just want to pray one more time, and then I'm going to have Brother Wren come up first. Brother Wren is a friend of Brother Yoon and his translator, so he's going to come up and talk to you for a minute. Then he's going to introduce Brother Yoon, and then Brother Yoon will speak in Chinese, and he'll translate so we can hear. But uh, let, me, let me pray. God, I just pray that you'd speak through Brother Ren and Brother Yoon right now. We want to hear a word from you, God. We're desperate to hear a word from you. And I know that they were telling me Brother Yoon was praying this morning, about four hours this morning, that he would have a word for us tonight. I believe he does. And I'm excited to hear it. We're excited to hear it. God, speak to us. Change our lives. Draw us even closer to Jesus tonight than we've ever been before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would y'all help me welcome Brother Wren? This is his friend and translator. We greet you all in the name of Jesus. It's wonderful to be here. Now you already recognize I don't speak English. I only imitate people who speak English. I, I was born in Finland, so I'm all finished from the beginning. So you don't need to come ask me, where do you come from? Um, I was uh, raised up in Sweden, and then for the last 31 years, I have been totally brainwashed and messed up in mainland China. So uh, uh, it's my privilege to be here. I met Brother Yun more than 20 years ago in China, and somehow uh, there was a bond coming together between us and we have been working together since that time and uh, whatever you haven't heard about brother Yun, you can come to me and I will tell it all I know everything about this man 
Uh, it's a great privilege to be here. I, I can sense that the expectation is very high. And uh, now just give you some, uh, some advice that if you are, your expectation is to Jesus, you will be surprised what he's going to do in your life. So forget heavenly man, forget the translator, listen what Jesus is speaking to you tonight, because Jesus is here, there's an expectation in this house, and God is going to do something great in your personal life tonight. You are never going to be the same again. Now, as uh, your pastor told you, uh, we come from totally different kind of culture, Brother Yun and myself. I've been there for more than 30 years. I have been uh, with this church, which is experiencing the greatest revival ever been going on on this earth. That the church is growing more than one million people flood into kingdom of God every month in China. And the government is predicting, and when the communists start to predict, it's almost like they prophesize. They believe that within 15 years, one out of three people living in mainland China are disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. And in order to give you more excitement, that is actually more than 500 million people. Ooh. But it's not only revival in China. God has a plan for this generation. And He is raising up an army here and there that will stand up for Jesus and for the gospel and they will go and they will lead the unknown world who have never heard the gospel. They will bring them into the kingdom of God. God has given the church in China a vision and it's called back to Jerusalem it has very little to do with Jerusalem at church because there are so little people in Israel but it has to do all the countries between China and Jerusalem the entire house of Buddha house of Hindu and the house of Muhammad and these believers in China, these million believers, they believe that God has called them to go into this region and fill them with presence of kingdom of God. Amen. This is the greatest missionary movement ever been uh, existing on this globe. And these simple Chinese believers, they believe is God has done the miracle in mainland China, in atheist communist country, He can do it everywhere. And wherever they go, they, from the grassroots, they start to uh, uh, establish kingdom of God. And uh, about eight years ago, we started to test whether this works. It's always good to test. And we, we, we found out a nation next to China where there was no competition with Western missions and we started to send Chinese missionaries into a little tiny country with name North Korea how many of you have heard lately any good news from North Korea can you raise up your hand everything you hear about North Korea is just bad news 23 million people are totally are living in totally isolation from the rest of the world. More than two million people are starving, very close to starve to death, even as I'm speaking here. 10% of the population do not know whether they're going to be alive still tomorrow morning when they wake up. And or this crazy leader has forced the whole country to worship him as God, and the only one who can help the nation. So we started to send Chinese missionaries and we finally succeeded a few years later to get the first back to Jerusalem missionary into North Korea. Just because they were Chinese, they are able to move in the country totally differently than any outside visitors. And they started to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hundreds of people uh, have burden for North Korea. They have been helping 
uh, the, doing humanitarian work. And, and they wanted to do something for kingdom of God. But none of them ever seen even one North Korean to receive Jesus Christ. After tens of years of missionary work, they were not able to do. But when the Chinese missionaries get into North Korea, within the first year, they led over 6,000 people to Lord Jesus in North Korea. And those of you who are quick to move after the meeting to the table, you may got a copy of a book with name Crimson Crucible. It tells the story of what is happening in North Korea today. People are coming to kingdom of God. And what we're going to do in North Korea in years to come, we have decided we are going to flood North Korea with word of God. And we cannot use a printed version because if you have a printed Bible in North Korea, it's a high risk that you will be executed just because you have a Bible. And that's why we have uh, designed a little tiny device. It's a call, we call it for clock Bible. Uh, inside here is a full North Korean Bible and, but you have to know the secret frequency code and push the buttons. Otherwise, it just show you what's the time. But if you know the secret code, anywhere you are, you can start to read the Word of God. And it's baked literally in an oven so that you cannot take it apart and the battery will last for five years. So whatever comes in as offerings in the meetings where we are, will be going to get the Word of God back to North Korea, to those thousands of people who are now coming to Kingdom of God. Then, uh, as a final thing, I share about another country that is giving uh, to you a lot of problems, because we have this tour called Bless Your Enemy Tour. Now, as a Christian, we don't have enemies. We have just the best friend enemies. And uh, the other country that is giving a lot of headache to us today is Iran. And uh, I, was in, I have been a couple of times in Iran. I was there in June. And I talked with some house church leaders. And I was asking, what is the situation in the country right now? And they said, since the beginning of the revolution in late 70s, there has never been a time when so many thousands of people are turning their back to Islam and they are coming into the kingdom of God. And I asked these brothers, what is the biggest need you have? What can we do besides praying for the church in Iran? I'm praying for revival in Iran. They said, we need desperately Bibles. And I said, how, how much do you need? And they said, if you could get us half a million Bibles as soon as possible. Now, uh, Iran is another country. It's very difficult uh, to get to smuggle in Bibles. This is, by the way, an Iranian Bible that is printed in China. We loaded them into sea containers. We ship them to Turkey, and then we smuggle them into Iran. And they actually got into the country because uh, last year, uh, 7 p.m. one Friday night, one of the two Ayatollahs, he stood up at the public television, broadcasted all over the nation, and he warned the nation, do not open this book, it is very dangerous. And when people are sick and tired of Islam and the Ayatollahs who have brought all this misery upon the nation and they warn about something, everybody wants to have a Bible. But uh, because of the big numbers, it's still logistically very difficult to bring in half a million or one million Bibles into Iran. So we have created a, short, a smaller version. And inside this little box, I have 20 Iranian Bibles. And it's immediately, for me as a smuggler, it's much easier to smuggle these Bibles 
So I'm very much for the size uh, and uh, because it all also cut down the price. Now uh, I will show you the, the size. This is actually a full Iranian Bible. It's a micro SD card with two gigabytes in it. And inside is the whole Bible. You can read it, you can listen to it. And there are seven movies in Farsi uh, about Jesus, about creation, about the more, more than dreams in it. And now, just as I speak here, we are establishing the first, what we call, digital bakery inside Iran. It means that we are going to start to produce this inside Iran in five different locations, in hundreds of thousands, and the Word of God will go back to, to Iran. Praise God. We are so thankful for your prayers. And we are so thankful Brother Yun has he's been looking forward for this meeting tonight. And he's going to be over excited because there are so many young people here tonight. He has always been surrounded by young people. Uh, because the young people still believe that it is possible I can change the world. And so you are his audience and it's my joy to be here together with him. And uh, we just bless you and then uh, uh, we will move on. Now we have a three minute video. It tells a little bit about what is happening right now. And uh, after that, then Brother Yun will come and he will share his message. God bless you. What if you were a refugee on a boat and could choose any country to live in for the rest of your life? Which country would you choose? If you were like most people, you would choose from the list on the right. But why? What makes these countries on the right so much different than the countries here on the left? This list is made up of nations that have the most religious freedom for Christians. And this list is made up of the nations where Christians experience the most persecution. Look at the relationship between religious freedom and free countries. Religious freedom is the common thread that forms the bedrock of free societies around the world. But those countries that are the most aggressive against the gospel of Jesus Christ are also the least evangelized countries in the world. And 97% of the least evangelized people live here in the 1040 window. The people who live in the 1040 window, they're not unreached like your uncle or grumpy neighbor who don't go to church or doesn't want to hear about Jesus Christ anymore. The people who live in the 1040 window, they're unreached in the way that they've never had the chance to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Most foreign missionaries are still working in areas that already have the gospel. Very few missionaries actually work to reach people in the 1040 window. From the money designated for missions in the U.S., only 5.4% is used for foreign missions. Of that 5.4%, only 0.37% is used to take the gospel to the unreached people, and of every $100 given to missions, only about two pennies are used, but only one penny goes to the 1040 window. So for every 100 missionaries, only one goes to the 1040 window. And that one missionary, for every $100 donated, will only receive one penny. And according to the latest research, $140 billion was used for church programs in the USA in 2011.
Less than 8 billion was sent overseas. And only 1% of that was used for missions in the most needy area of the world, where two-thirds of the population live. To put things into perspective, that's less than 1% of what was spent on dog food. But there is hope. God is stirring things up in the East. China is seeing one of the largest revivals this world has ever seen. The floods of revival are raining down, and some estimate that as many as 30,000 people are coming to Christ in China every day. The most populated country in the world is being swept up in the winds of revival in spite of its communist government. The Chinese who are coming to Christ are not content with keeping their Christianity to themselves. They have been given the baton of the Great Commission to take the gospel into the countries in the 1040 window and what they call back to Jerusalem. For thousands of years, China has been trading and working with countries on their borders. As new believers in China are reading stories in the Bible like those of Paul and Barnabas, they too are leaving their homes and going out to give their lives on the mission field. The term back to Jerusalem is not a new one. It started in the hearts of the... Hallelujah! Welcome Jesus together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now uh, say to one another uh, in, uh, in your own language, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. Amen. One, two, three. Jesus Christ is Lord. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated in peace, like we say in China. They call me Heavenly Man, Brother Yun. This name, Brother Yun, it means Brother Cloud. It comes from Hebrews chapter 11. We are surrounded by the, this uh, testimony. How many of you want to become a crazy witness for Jesus? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And now say to three people around you with great confidence, Jesus is resurrected from dead, and that gives us something to testify about. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 When I was less than 17 years old, I first time met resurrected Lord Jesus. Before that happened, my life and my family's life was totally hopeless. And, uh, because of my own experience, I really want to emphasize this. Do not allow your past hinder for you to be, have a great future with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is alive. 
我再次求你能够对你身边人说：“耶稣活住，不要让我们的过去掌控我们生命的未来。”I want you to repeat it as to one another. Jesus is alive. Do not allow your past to hinder you anymore. Amen. Jesus, hold on. Don't let our past hold us back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We have the right to choose where we are born, which country, which people. You were not given choice. To decide what country you were born into. We were not given options to decide who will become our parents. Maybe some of you have been thinking, "Oh, I wish I could have got a little bit better other." Uh, and other parents uh, for myself, uh, but we could not do that uh, decision. And you were not giving options to decide what will be your skin color, white, yellow, black. None of those things we to decide ourselves, but we can decide tonight. I will follow Jesus. Hallelujah. This one Jesus, he really is from the dead to life. We are all his witnesses. And I really want to emphasize, get you excited about the fact that Jesus is resurrected from dead and he is alive and he has a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. I am a man. I am a woman. 我出生在哪一个家庭，这是我的命。但是，我想告诉各位，耶稣真的能改变我们的命运。And you say,、uh, my destiny. This was my course.、Uh, I was born into this family, into these circumstances. But it's only Jesus who can turn your life up and down and give you a totally new future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 我个人是出生在一个无神论国家，一个非常贫穷的家庭。I was born in atheist communist China into a very poor family. 我只读书不到五，没有读到五年书。I have only attended、uh, three years, and、uh, not even four years of public school. 因为在我童年的时候，中国当时一个大的饥荒，哥哥在饥荒中饿死了。In early years.、Uh, In my life, there was a great、uh, starving hunger hitting China, and more than 70 million people starved to death, and among them also my oldest, oldest brother. And not only that we, have,、uh, we were poor, my brother had died, but then my father conducted.、Uh, He became sick and he conducted cancer, and the doctors announced that he had a terminal cancer and he had at the most three weeks to live. My mother, although she was a Christian, my mother had heard the gospel before revolution. The time when missionaries still were there, she had heard the gospel, but she had lost. Her relationship with Jesus during the years of、uh, revolution. 当时共产党在中国执政的时候，魔正如耶稣说出来，魔鬼来是要偷窃、杀害、毁坏，已经把我母亲那个信仰想要把她偷走的。And through all the evil things that were happening in the in China. Uh, Satan, like Jesus said, who is coming to steal, kill, and destroy, he stole away the faith that was in my mother's heart. And during the Cultural Revolution, another cleanup there was, was not allowed. Anyone was not supposed to have uh, uh, Bibles and and.、Uh, No one was、uh, allowed to believe in Jesus anymore. 那我的妈妈慢慢地就开始
，魔鬼把他的祷告偷走了，他也不敢当众承认耶稣的名。And the Satan, the way he was attacking my mother was that first she stopped praying to Jesus, and little by little, everything that she been the relationship that she had to Jesus, it was gone, and she stopped. Uh, uh, Communicating with Jesus. I want to tell you, we are here today to serve God. We are here 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 to serve God. 我的妈妈，她虽然渐渐离开了神，但是神没有离开她。一个晚上，她再一次遇见了耶稣。My mother left Jesus, but Jesus did not left my mother. And one night, in the darkest moment of her life, Jesus appeared again and called her back to Him. 一个晚上，我的妈妈看见我的哥哥、姐姐和我们都睡着的时候。他开始看着我的父亲，没有希望。他不知道饥荒什么时候过去。他错误的选择，想要悬念自己。This happened the darkest night of her life. Her father, her, her husband has been given three weeks to live. She could not take a future as a widow with five children. So that night, she had decided tonight I'm going to suicide. I'm going to end up my misery. 就在这个时候，他突然间听到一个声音说：“孩子，回家吧，回家吧，耶稣爱你。”She was standing on the chair and connecting her neck to the rope hanging from the ceiling. She suddenly heard a voice of the Holy Spirit calling, "My child, come back home. Jesus loves you." 那是在一个漆黑的夜晚，他看看没有一个人。这个声音是从哪里来的 ？She was totally surprised. It was dark in the room. It was past midnight, and she could not. There's nobody here. Who is speaking to me? 可是这个声音在她里面一直越来越强。孩子，不要放弃，回家吧。And the, the voice of that sound, the sound of that voice was not all over the room, and it went into her soul, and she heard the. The voice saying, "My child, come back home. Jesus loves you." Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 圣灵就在提醒我的妈妈，立刻想到这是宣教士从中国被逼离开中国的时候。And suddenly, my mother recognized these are the words missionaries. Told to me more than 20 years ago, when they came to my village and they were saying to everybody, "Jesus loves you. It is Jesus who is calling me. Come back home." That time, my mom could not hold on to her mother. She fell on the floor and started crying, "Father, I have been so many years and I have not forgotten you. You have not forgotten me." She fell down by the chair and she recommitted her life and said, "Heavenly Father, I am so sorry for all these years. I have not been." Thinking about you, I've not been praying. I have been gone astray, but you still love me. Hallelujah. 后来他就把我的哥哥姐姐和我们一同，孩子们起来奉耶稣的名跪下为爸爸祷告。I never forgot. She woke us up. It was past midnight. We were in solid sleep, and she woke us up, children. There is hope for our family. Jesus loves you, loves us. Now we have to all surround our father's bed where he is dying, and we call upon the name of Jesus together. This is my first time hearing Jesus' name. I was 16 years old, and it was the first time I heard the name of Jesus in my life. My mother had never said even once Jesus to me. 我们虽然哥哥姐姐，我们虽然不知道耶稣是谁，但是中国的文化有一点和我们西方美国的文化有一点不一样。中国的文化就是孝顺父母。And、uh, we didn't have a clue 
what it means that we are supposed to pray and call upon the name of Jesus. But the Chinese culture is a little bit different to the Western culture. If your mother wake you up midnight and say, children, let's all kneel down and let's start to pray together, we just do. We don't negotiate about the time and, and, and the work. Mama, and uh, my father was at the last stage of cancer, stomach cancer. He was fading away. And we were kneeling around his bed. And when mother started to shout, Jesus, have mercy upon my family, we repeated my, what mother said. And I, I didn't know that some people believe you have to pray when your eyes are closed. So my eyes were open and I was just, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy upon my father. I need father. My father could not speak anymore, but he understood what we were doing. And as we were calling the name of Jesus around his bed, first time in my life, I saw that tears started to run down from his eyes. And when we, when we saw our father in tears, to all we children, we started to cry. And we said, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy upon our father. We need our father. Beloved family members, among the billions of voices rising up from this earth, our Heavenly Father recognized the voice of each one of His children. Maybe, Maybe there is things happening in your life that in, you are in tears because of the, what is going on. But if your tears are directly to the Heavenly Father, they will be counted and He will help you. Hallelujah. Early in the morning, first time for three months, my father, with a very weak voice, he said, I feel I'm hungry. Can you bring me something to eat? And praise God, the miracle started that morning. Within one week, my father was completely healed and restored for terminal cancer. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And now I just want you to really force this into the person next to you and say to that person, Jesus is resurrected from dead and he do the same things today and he want you to be his witness. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, 
不要怕，耶稣活住，你能面对明天，面对将来。Just because Jesus lives, you can face tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 我们，我非常感谢神牧师。我们教会的弟兄姊妹的祷告，邀请我来到这里。我刚刚听到牧师在做见证说，你们一开始只有十二个人从家中开始。I'm so thankful to the Lord for this opportunity to come and witness about Jesus, and I was so moved when your pastor was sharing the history of this church, how it began from twelve people together, and how it has been growing in the last six years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 要想改变这个国家，改变这个时代，必须从个人、从家中开始改变。If we want to transform our generation, we have to start inside our families, our homes, and then impact the neighborhood and the region, the city, the location where we are. 我的父亲带到了医治，然后第一件事情就是告诉我的妈妈说，要我们所有的亲戚朋友到我们家里来。After my father being healed and the whole family was born again and saved by Jesus, my father immediately told to my mother, "You have to send children to invite all our relatives to come to our house." 我们必须要告诉我们的亲戚，告诉我们的朋友，我们的亲戚们，这位耶稣真的能够救我们，能够改变我们的家。And he was so determined. He said, "We have to let every relative know that the the only hope we have is in Jesus, and He has rescued our family." Hallelujah. 当时的中国虽然不允许有人和聚会。但是法律上没有说不可以走亲戚。And my father knew, as a former soldier, he knew that the it was totally forbidden during the Cultural Revolution to have any public meetings in China. But they had not forbidden that you cannot invite your relatives to come and visit your home. 就这样，神透过我们的亲。邀请我们的亲戚一个家一个家都认识经历了耶稣。And as we were able to get all the relatives to come to our house, and they were met with my father and mother, who were witnessing, everybody knew about his sickness. And when they saw him standing there, totally healthy, we saw the first day all our relatives they kneel down and they receive Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 当时的中国虽然不像这样有这样的大的聚会，但每一个家都愿意。把自己的家奉献出来，去祷告，建立家庭集团。For all these tens of years, we haven't had big meeting facilities like you have here tonight, but we've just flooded every home of the believers. We squeezed in as many people we could get inside, and we led them all to Jesus Christ in our homes. 感谢神，那一年差不多最少有一千到两千人真正的归向了主耶稣。And within the first year, as I was witnessing with my mother, around we could see more than three thousand people responded to gospel of Jesus Christ in in that area. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 可是，刚刚当教会复兴起来的时候，我突然得到一本真正的传道证书，但不是神学院发来的，纯是公安局发来一个，要要要抓捕。And not long after this, I got my first certificate for ministry that I was totally qualified to be a minister because I became a wanted criminal. The authorities they started to look for me, and the persecution break throughout. I 不是没有家，不是不想家。一夜之间，我没有办法再回家了。It wasn't that I didn't want to go back home. But I was not able to go home because I knew that the policemen were waiting for me. So I was, for many years, I was not able to return back home at all. 神就用这种逼迫、患难的方式，让我从一个一个地区到一个地区。
And God used this persecution and the wave of the persecution to keep me moving with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I was moving from one city to another city, from one province to another province, uh, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. I didn't have any training to ministry. I did not know what you are supposed to do when you are sharing the gospel. But I just felt that it is important to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and to heal all the sick. Hallelujah. 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 You think now say to one another, preach the gospel of the kingdom and heal the sick. Amen. When Jesus came to this world, he did not establish a superior religion. He came to give us life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very important for us to know what's the very core of the gospel and also who is the one we believe in. I didn't know how to do it. I was just sharing what God has been doing in my life and in the lives of the people I have uh, been ministering to. And then I, people said, we have this problem, that problem. I can pray for you. And uh, I, God just opened my eyes to see. I saw people had so many sicknesses in China those years. So I was always calling the people forward who were sick. And then I asked them to kneel with me. And as we were praying together, the Spirit of God hit them. And they stood up completely healed for different kind of sicknesses. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I'm so thankful that you already have been trained how to pray. The prayer is the key of revival. I was so moved when your leadership wanted to lay their hands upon us and pray over us before we start to minister to you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The purpose is that each one of you, when you leave this building, you will identify a person who have problems in their lives, and you will later you pray for those people and you set them free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you have problem with difficult people and enemies around you, the solution is very simple. Bring them to Jesus and you get good friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have experienced this in my life. That's why I share this to you. After I've been non-stop 24-7 in ministry for 10 years, I was so burned out and so tired. So God prepared a vacation home for me. I was so excited about the power of kingdom of God. So that kept me going year after year after year. But my physical body was burning out. 
And I, I was so excited when Jesus said to me one day, I am going to send you to holidays. I never forgot that morning when in prayer when Jesus said to me, Brother Yun, I see you are really tired. I have good news for you. I, have pre- I send you to a place where you can rest. But then he said to me, before you go to vacation, I want you to, to get together those, some of those young people you have led to the Lord, and you have to train them to become truly disciples of Jesus. I, until that day, I did not have any understanding, any clue what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. I thought that everyone who believes in Jesus is a disciple of Jesus Christ. But the Lord used the word of God to open my understanding that the grace of God for salvation is free. If you believe, you will receive God's grace and you are ready for heaven. But to be a disciple, you have to dis- uh, d- deny yourself every day and pick up your cross and follow me. Are you still ready to follow Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand up and proclaim this together. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You are going to follow Jesus, no to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No point no turning and now take hold of hand the person next to you and say, I follow Jesus and I never turn back. Amen. Amen. Please be seated in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Hallelujah. How like, but you, Shen, you, Shen, you, be a good thing. Now, what you shall see. And Jesus never lies. He had prepared a vacation home for me. And one day, he started to bring me to that vacation. Now, so I'm happy to be a good thing. I'm happy to be a good thing. And it started towards the end of my first ever discipleship training. I had been training more than 100 young people. And towards the end, my, uh, the time came for me to go to vacation. I didn't know what to do to train. I didn't know what it means to uh, have a discipleship training, but I thought that as myself, I had memorized 
all the books of the New Testament. So I decided that it's very important that they will start to memorize one whole book of the New Testament. So that was the very core of the first discipleship training. And the reason we did that way in China was because it was the Bible was illegal book in China, and you easily they confiscated your Bible. But if they memorized the Bible, it was in the, in their mind, in their heart. They were never separated from Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we were memorizing different chapters from the Bible together, the Lord gave me a message, and, and I delivered that message to everybody. And I shared to these young people, my vision is that the name of every village in China will be changed. They will be called the village of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So after the uh, four days of training, we were in process, in process to we lay hands upon these young people and we send them all the corners of China to expand the kingdom of God. At that very moment, the uh, local uh, army and policemen surrounded the farmhouse and we were captured. That was one week before Christmas. It was froze. It was so cold. It was zero. And it was, uh, everything was covered with snow and ice. And uh, and uh, when the policemen took hold of me and my closest co-workers, they wrapped off my, our clothes and they kicked us on the ground and they started to beat an, uh, us. And then they asked, who are you and what is your business? And the Holy Spirit came upon me and he gave me something to answer to that very firm question. And I don't know where the words came from, but I just uh, told with the largest, of, uh, with my fullness of my voice, I said, I'm heavenly man and I live in the village of gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly man. You live in the village of gospel. Where is that village? And I, I, the spirit of God came upon me and I started to prophesy. I said, every village in China is going to be called the village of gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The captain of the force was uh, uh, questioning me and he said, What's the name of your father? What is the name of your mother? And, uh, and are there other people in your family? And I said, My, I, my father's name is Phil of Grace. And my mother's name is Hope. Love and faith. <laughs> and the police captain had no clue what in the world of family is he coming from. <laughs> and I, I have an older brother. His name is the king is coming back. And then I have a younger brother. He has so deep desire to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you expecting Jesus to return? Amen. Hallelujah. 
在耶稣里，我们是一家人。If if that's true, then we are from same family. Amen. 你们都是我的弟兄姊妹。You are all my brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 我们是有一个共同的爸爸，就是。We have, we have only one Father, and He is the Father of all grace. Amen. 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 So, don't let your past determine your future. Don't allow your past to hinder your future. Don't allow your past to hinder you anymore. The,、uh, the grace of God is sufficient for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak without the grace of God. Even when I was in prison. 就把我关了起来，说这个人是疯子。Immediately, when they stopped believing a word what I said, they handcuffed me and and they arrested me. 神，继续惊叹说我是疯子，那么就发疯吧，就在监牢里面就为主发疯。The captain to announce that this is a crazy man. He is very dangerous for society. We have to lock him in. And when I heard I'm a crazy man, I said. If, if that's true, then let's behave like a crazy man. When I started to shout with fullness of my、uh, my voice, Psalm、uh, 33, that nothing will、uh, stop me worshiping my God and praising His name. 当你开始赞美神的时候，一切的恐惧，一切的战惊都离开了你。And you know, if you understand what it means truly to worship God, it's not when everything is going well in your life. It's in the middle of your trials and difficulties. You decide, I will worship God, and that is when heaven will hit you. Hallelujah. Amen. 后来警察就再来抓到他。终于认出了我，你原来你是天上人，你是一个被通缉的通缉犯。It took three weeks for them at the police station to find out that I actually I wasn't heavenly man. I was the man whose picture was all over the police station. They've been looking for me for ten years. 我说传道人就是天上人。And they were asking, you have been lying to me, to us. And I said, no, every. Preacher is a heavenly man. 当时要把我戴上手铐，要存一个地区，要带到我的地区去。And they,、uh, they, they put me on the back of a police truck, and I was hanging from handcuffs. My feet were not hitting the floor, and they transported me many, many hours back to my home province and back to the local prison, and I was locked into the prison. 如果你问我耶稣到底是谁，我会告诉你，每一个人不一样。我会告诉你，他的名字叫我知道。Now, many people ask me, how is Jesus like? Who is Jesus? And my answer is very simple. My Jesus, he have one name, and that is I know. 当时我听到主这个，我讲一句话。云弟兄，不要怕，我知道。As I was hanging in that pain on the back of the police truck, and I, I just said, "Why, why, why?" The Lord said to me, "My child, I know everything you are going through right now. You just rest in me." 神就透过这一句话帮助我，无论在任何环境中，我都认定主啊，你知道。So from that day on, I have never asked questions anymore. Lord, why? Because I know my Jesus knows everything that is happening in my life. Today, 晚上来在这里的每一位 dear brothers and sisters who have come to this Monday evening meeting, 主耶稣他拣选了你 Jesus has chosen you. He has called you to follow him. He knows you. He knows you. He he knows everything about you. He knows all the circumstances that you are facing, all the challenges that you are facing. He knows all the circumstances that you are facing, all the challenges that you are facing in your life. I hope this dear Jesus who loves me from the dead today can help you, can help you to really know who he is and who you are. And my prayer. 
for you tonight is that you may, in a new, intimate way, know Jesus and hear his voice speaking to you, and you will be set free. I could go on the whole night and just reach to uh, half of my testimony. So I start to close right now. And I really want to pray over all of you that you really know deeply that Jesus, who so deeply loves each one of you. It doesn't matter what as your circumstances in your life. One sister called me this afternoon from Beijing. I led her to the Lord uh, three days ago in Jerusalem. She had nothing to do with Jesus or Christianity in hell. She was a good communist. Uh, they were members in the party and they had a high position at the party. But when she was a deepest trouble in her life, she got a word from the Lord through that meeting in Jerusalem, and Lord changed her life. This happened in the hotel where these Chinese delegates have been, uh, been staying, and it happened at the breakfast buffet. I was there, and this woman came to me, and she wanted to be polite, and she just said in English, hello. And immediately, the Holy Spirit revealed me the misery of her heart. And the Lord said to me to tell to this woman that you are considering to suicide, but you don't have to. Jesus will change your life. And she said, who told you? I haven't told anyone that I'm considering to end my life. And she burst it in tears. And then she said, how did you know that I am writing my life story and after that is finished, I'm going to end my life? I didn't know that she was one of the anchors of the biggest TV station in China, very well-known person. She was totally she was already preparing right her lifetime and the reason on the paper how why she and will end her life. And I said to this woman, you have come to the city of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, and he will change your life right now. And before the breakfast were over, the whole family kneeled there and 500 people were witnessing when they received Jesus uh, and they became followers of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and she called me and she said, my life was totally changed in Jerusalem three days ago. And now I'm going to write uh, about everything what God is going to through, do through my life. Now you don't need to be going to Jerusalem to be changed. You are in the perfect position to be changed tonight. Amen. 
How many of you want to start to write your love story with Jesus? Amen. Let us stand up together. 奉耶稣的名邀请各位，你举起手来。in the name of Jesus, I just go ask you to raise up your hand. And repeat this prayer with me. 主耶稣, Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have chosen me. Tonight, in your name, I make a decision. I want to receive your calling to become your disciple. I believe that the blood of Jesus is cleansing me from all my sins. I welcome Jesus to live in my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And say to one another, we are all Jesus' disciples. We are believers of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you very much. Amen. Oh, Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.